How's it going, Super Friends? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be opening up the Hasbro Justice League America Superman, The Atom, and Plastic Man from 1999. Let's start with Superman, shall we? Because he's my favorite. Superman includes collector display stand. The figure packed nicely in his little bubble there. We can see the JLA figure stand in back and the fabulous Justice League America logo right there on the top. And they're all gonna have that too. For the back of these package, all of them had collect them all and another Justice League logo and the world's greatest DC Comics superheroes, the mightiest heroes in the universe, join forces to combat the world's diabolical villains. There's also instructions on how to put together the collector display, which for every figure consisted of a comic book cover. In Superman's case, it was JLA issue number 20 and the base, which had a little slot at the bottom. Cool beans. Let's open it up. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful than sometimes I am because these are these are much older and I do want to keep them in good condition. So for starters, here is the JLA action figure base with the slot for putting the card in. Superman's gonna come out of his bubble. We'll move this off to the side. And oh wait, no wait. Do I want to move it off to the side or do I want to cut the dis the display base out of the back? Yeah, I don't really want to. You can just imagine what it looks like. Ooh, they're together now. I'm not fooling anyone. The Superman's a cool looking figure and an essential if you ask me for completing the line. No DC Comics action figure line is complete without adding Superman into the mix. And the, the fun part is, is that both of these Supermans are the exact same body mold only with a different head on the current JLA Superman. This one's got the shorter hair and the original one from Total Justice has the longer hair or mullet. There is one other difference aside from the fact that they use a completely different head sculpt, and that's the fact that the red on the current version is actually a little bit more muted and a little bit softer, whereas the Total Justice version is shiny all around, and the red is very nice and brilliant. You might notice that a little bit more with the capes, too. Again, the Total Justice cape is definitely a lot more vibrant, while the Justice League one from Hasbro that uses the same body molds and cape mold is certainly a little bit more reserved. And obviously the Hasbro version doesn't come with any of that fractal gear, it's just the figure. But it's actually pretty good, the paint apps and the sculpt look nice, just the same as the previous one. They are pre-posed and that does turn off a lot of people, but for someone like myself who is just a little bit of a completionist, almost to the point of it being some sort of weird mental illness, I am perfectly fine with this figure and I love it very much. And now we move on. To the Atom. This figure of course has the exact same packaging as Superman and as all the rest will in this video, except for he's got his little name down the bottom there, the Atom. Includes collector display stand. This is one that I never ever 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 saw hanging on the pegs back in the day, and this is certainly one of the more neutral posed figures out of the entire set. And look, he comes with a little tiny buddy shrunken down Atom. In the back of the box, we know it, we love it, we've seen it before, except for this time it has the Atom's bio, which you can feel free to pause to read if you'd like to and the cover of JLA issue. What, what issue is that? There's no number on it. I've just beaten the world's greatest superheroes. How are you going to stop me? Well, I'm going to fart in a jar and toss it at you and then you're going to pass out because of the fumes and then I'm going to pull out your spark plugs. This is one that's almost painful to open <laughs> because it's actually kind of hard to get my hands on, but I'm doing it. I'm taking them out, doing it for the video, being careful. Not losing even the little tiny atom. You're gonna put it all back together, move it out of the way. Here's a little looksy doodle at the JLA stand that he comes with. These are fantastic action figure stands. I like these very much. Here's the back side. No one really cares about it, but I thought I'd show it to you anyway. And here's the little teensy weensy atom that comes with him. Hang on, let's take a macro shot of him too so you can get a better look. There we go. He, <laughs> well, I mean, it's small, so you gotta cut it some slack here. <laughs> at least they packed one in. And look. Here it is from behind. And then of course we have the Atom figure, which in my opinion is actually one of the best renditions of this era Atom that I've ever seen. The colors are clean, crisp, bright, and he looks like the Atom. Even the face sculpt looks good. This whole figure, in my opinion, is a fantastic version of the Atom. And being that this figure really is very neutrally posed and neutrally sculpted. Sure, he's muscular, but he doesn't look as roided out as the previous figures in this series. You can actually pose him alongside any of your figures that are DC in this scale, and he actually looks like he fits in. Like here he is standing with two superpowers figures, and honestly, as a kid, I would have had no problem cracking this guy out along Plastic Man and Dr. Fate and the Superman and all the rest of them. So yeah, this Hasbro JLA Adam has definitely earned his place alongside the rest of my Total Heroes and JLA figures because he's just so rad looking. Then finally, let's end off with Plastic Man. 
which this version is actually made up, you'll see, mostly of bendy rubber rather than plastic. There's Plastic Man's name logo down to bottom. Same card as the other ones up top. And the back has all the exact same stuff as the previous two figures, only this time he has an issue of JLA number 21 as the backdrop for his display base. And of course, here's his bio, which you can pause to read if you'd like to as well. All right, old place. Time to open you up. Time to open you up. Time, 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 time. There's your display base. It's a red one, just like we got with the Atom. And then look at that place. Okay, hold on. Let's let's see if we can straighten him out a little bit before we move on. He's got the those those bendy wires in his arms. Where if you're not careful, you know what happens. They break, <laughs> and then they're no longer bendy. <laughs> but in this case, he's brand new, so that's not going to be a problem. There's his arms, and then his, uh, rah, rah, bend up. Oh, God. It's been bent in the package like that for 20 years, so it's really, uh, it's not wanting to go back up. Oh, no, Plass. This ain't, this ain't looking good. There. That's better. I know that right here, he kind of looks like an enemy from a Resident Evil video game, all stretched out and weird looking, but I promise you, this is Plastic Man, and he means us no harm. The paint and sculpt for this figure are roided out just the same as most of the other figures in the series, and I love it very, very much. Plastic Man doesn't have any toes in this figure, which is correct. Plastic Man doesn't have any toes. But they did miss the black and yellow triangle that acts as a design feature in the middle of his big belt there. They just, they just use the lines. They buggered it up a little bit. Still though, gotta love the fact that the colors are nice and bright on this figure. Like that very much. It is kind of fun that he can bop someone in the face from far away. And then scratch his head and go, gee, I don't know who did that. That couldn't have been me. And the face sculpt for old Plast looks pretty good too. Could be painted a tad neater, but that definitely screams Plastic Man to me. Love it, love it, love it. Here's Plastic Man flanked on both sides by two of my favorite versions of the character. The left is the one, the only, the legendary Superpowers Collection version, and the other one is the DC Universe Classics San Diego Comic Con version. And as for the Atom, I'm only going to stand in with the DC Universe Classics version because, well, that's the only one that I have that's in that costume, so it was the only one that I thought was relevant. And just in case you're wondering, here's what Supes looks like flanked in between a Superpowers Collection and a DC UC scale version of the character. He would not stand without that display base, so this don't look at this like it's a proper height comparison. Now as for what I think about these figures, my closing statement would be, I really like these guys a lot. They're an image of what we used to have access to back in the day, after the Kenner Superpowers and after the Toy Biz line was done. There wasn't a lot in the way of getting multi-character generic DC action figure lines. Pretty much everything was Batman or Superman. So at retail, these still to this day remain one of the only DC action figure retail lines that was comprehensive and had a wide number of non-Batman related characters. As for how accessible these guys are, well it is the eBay age, you can always take a little swagger through the eBay action figure pages and see if you can find these guys. I typically see these guys for anywhere from $15 to $35 a figure, depends on who it is, if it's mint in box and if it's harder to find or not. Anyway. That's all the time I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video to be a useful, entertaining, enriching, enlightening, splendid waste of time for the day. And if you did, please leave a like on the video. That would help me out a lot. Anything to say, leave it down in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe or not, whatever you want to do. And I will see you next time with the next one. Have a DC day, everybody, and take care.